Oh, there you go, Gabriel. Aren't you glad they keep bringing me milk? Yeah, I bet you are. Wonder where our friend Blue's been, though. Hasn't been here for a couple of days, has he? In fact, he hasn't been here since that day he was supposed to go to the clinic in Chesterfield. Wonder what happened to him. Whoops, what's wrong, Gabriel? Listen, I just want you to be careful of that other guy, though, all right, Kitty? You be careful of Lance. I don't want him to ever find you, because I don't, I don't know what he'd do. He really scares me. Oh, come here, baby. I don't know how much longer I can take this place. I gotta get out of here. I don't understand why Daddy won't pay the ransom. Unless maybe something's happened to him. I know, I know, it was just forever ago that I took that picture. Gabriel, I don't understand it, baby. I don't understand. Who is it? Who's there? It's none of your business, baby. You want this stuff or not? Yeah, just put it down. Please put it down. Please put it down. That's better. You gotta start showing little manners around here, you know? 24 hours, it's not easy taking care of you that long. At least you can show a little gratitude. Oh, I'll give you gratitude. Thank you very much. You're just too kind for words. That's good. What is it? You got some rats around here or something? Huh? Rats? Yeah, I thought I heard something. No, it's probably just, it's the wind. It gets very drafty in this place. Yeah? Yeah, it, you wouldn't imagine how very, very cold it gets out here. In fact, I was wondering what the weather's like outside. Do you think it's going to snow again today? Is there really any concern of yours? Look, I'm just trying to make a little light conversation. No, I'm not interested, okay? Then what are you interested in? Why are you hanging around? Let's just say I think you're real nice looking. Isn't that enough? You're a lot nicer looking than Blue. Well, is Blue here? What's with you, lady? You and Blue got something going, huh? Just cool it, will you? Oh. By the way, do you still have my purse? Yeah, I got your purse. Well, could I have it, please? Maybe. Really? Yeah. Maybe I'll check with the boss. Well, good. And if you, when you check with the boss, if you would please, please, just ask him how much longer I'm going to have to stay in here. Look, lady, we're just waiting on your old man, all right? Well, I can't take much longer of this. I'm, I'm going to go crazy if, I, if you just don't let me out of here. And you've got to let me out, because, look, I'm, I will make a deal with you. I will give you money if you would just let me out of here, please. You'd like that, wouldn't you, huh? Yes, I would like you that. You know, if I did that, I'd be a dead man. Now, sorry, lady, you're just going to stay Stop. here until your old man comes out with the dough. You got it? What if, if something's going wrong and he can't get the money, then what? Then you're just going to rot. Hey, that's a good idea, isn't it? Maybe that's what we ought to do, even if Carpenter does come up with it. That'd be better for everybody involved, wouldn't it? Peter, hurry up! You're gonna be late! Coming! Huh. Seems to me you said that ten minutes ago. Oh. I think I fell back asleep. Well, you know, I, I know that you wanted to get up early this morning, but short of dragging you out of bed, I did the best I could. Stayed up too late studying. So are you ready for your test? Not exactly. I gotta finish reading Thoreau's Civil Disobedience. And now here's a guy you gotta admire. He stood up for what he believed. Listen to this. It's all a quotation here. The only obligation which I have the right to assume is to do at any time what I think is right. Huh? Huh? Can't go wrong with that kind of advice. That's right. So Ben and Laurie gonna be here this morning or what? Sometime this morning, as far as I know. That's good. I need to talk to Ben. About Thoreau? 
Not exactly. Oh, I get it. Man to man talk, huh? Yeah, something like that. Hey, you know what? I'm really amazed at the way Lori's holding up. He's seeing her, the guy who almost raped her. Should have been quite a shock. Yeah, that could have been quite a setback. But you know what? It's really opened everything up. Yeah, I knew she'd come around eventually. Mm-hmm, so did I. But, you know, bump into that guy like that. Gee, the Lord must have given her tremendous strength. Yeah. You know what I figure? She's just about the same old Lori. Not quite, but getting there. You know what? I think you're right. Hey, maybe that's Ben and Lori. Could be. We got home early. Lori! Ben, you're back home! <laughs> early. We didn't expect you till later. Well, we were going to have breakfast up in Fairmont, but we decided to get an early start because we want to be back here as soon as possible. Well, I'm glad right. you did. Say, why don't I fix up a big breakfast for all of us? Oh, Mom, don't go to the trouble, really. We're fine. Well, okay. Maybe later. Oh, Lori, it's so good to have you home. Yeah, we missed you again. Well, you two sound like I've been gone for months. It's only been overnight. Well, even so, it's just good to have you back home. And what, were you afraid Dr. Dietrichson was going to ask me to stay? Dr. Diedrichsen said she's doing very well, exceptionally well, considering all she's been through. Well, that's all we wanted to hear. Right. And guess who we saw up in Fairmont? Who? You know that lady that used to live with Mrs. Redlin? Uh, Babs Farley. Yeah, really? Babs. Yeah, she's waiting tables up there at Walter's restaurant. Only this time, she's a redhead. <laughs> oh, I own will be glad to hear that. She's been wondering where Babs was. Yes, but uh, you shouldn't say anything about us seeing her. I mean, I'll see Iona today at the clinic and explain the situation to her. Uh, what's the deal? Is she hiding or something? Well, let's just put it this way. She would be a lot better off if nobody knew where she is. You know, she kept talking to me about my purse. This one, the one that you gave me for Christmas? She wanted to see it. She thought it was Miriam's. And then when she, she looked at it, she was like rummaging all through it, like she was looking for something. Yeah, it was really strange. I, I couldn't figure out what she was doing. And whatever she was looking for, she never did find. I'll talk to Ion and see if I can find out what that was all about. Say, Ben, are you going to go into the clinic this morning? Mm-hmm. As soon as I unpack and uh, get a little breakfast. Hey, in that case, we better get to work in the kitchen, Lori. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm not very hungry myself, but I'd be glad to help you. Okay, let's go then. Okay, I'll be in there in a minute. Uh, ben, I mm -hmm. uh, think I could talk to you for a minute? Sure. Uh, let me unpack and wash up, and I'll be down in a second. Okay. What were you doing out there? What was I doing? I was waiting for her to finish breakfast. I, didn't I expect... told you that I didn't want you to try anything with the lady. Do you understand? Oh, is that why you're here, man? You checking up on me? It wouldn't hurt, Lance. Not as far as you're concerned. Yeah? Well, I didn't touch her, I swear. You ask her yourself. I might just do that. Well, you just go ahead. I ain't got nothing to hide. Got any word on Blue? Yeah, Weaver came by the... Uh... Penthouse this morning. He said that Blue hasn't been back to his apartment at all. <laughs> what do you expect, man? Blue's dumb, but he ain't that dumb. He even checked Leon's diner. No sign of him there either. I told you that college boy ain't gonna be able to handle it, Ron. I don't know about that, Lance. He was up all night walking the streets looking for Blue. He even roughed up a couple of girls trying to find him. He hasn't come up with anything yet, but I'll tell you one thing, the kid's determined. Yeah, sure he's determined. You heard what he said. He knows the girl that Blue attacked. It's a personal thing with him. So what? If that's the way he feels about it, the better it is for us. Oh, Ron, you really surprised me. I thought you knew better than that. You need to be cool to handle a job like that. Weaver's all hyped up with revenge. There's no telling what kind of a stupid mistake he'll make. I don't know. So far, I've been impressed with his thoroughness. It's an act, Ron. Don't you know that? When it comes time for him to pull the trigger, he's going to chicken out, just like he did with Paula. He ain't got the guts to do it. There's no way he'll be able to kill somebody. We wouldn't even be in this mess if you didn't bring Blue into our organization. Look, I brought Blue in the organization because he knows how to follow orders and he shuts up. Now, how was I supposed to know he gets us kicked raping women? I thought if he's surrounded by all these hookers, I had no idea that he'd come down on some innocent little thing. Oh, you thought he was just a regular kind of guy, huh? You should have known that that moron, there was something wrong with him. Look, if you didn't like him, all you had to do was say so. I ain't to please, Ron. I just remembered, uh, Miriam wants her purse back. Your purse? Yeah. Now, why does she want her purse after all this time? I don't know, man. You know how women are. Maybe she wants her makeup. Yeah, maybe. No, really, I think she's getting bored. <laughs> I can't imagine why. 
Well, I told her I'd tell you anyway. All right. I'll think about it. I don't know, man. Maybe she wants to write her son. She asked me about that before. Yeah, well, why don't you tell her about the return address? That's very funny. With your brains, I'm sure you gave it to her. Let's see what this lady has in here. A little perfume, a little makeup. That can stay. Frankly, I think she could use it. Now, this definitely has to go. I don't want her writing anything under any circumstances. What's here? Her driver's license. And not a bad likeness. I think we'll keep it. Might make a nice memento for Carpenter. What else we got here? Hey, man, you think one of those keys goes to Carpenter's house? Maybe. Might come in handy. Keep these two. What else is left here? Hey, man, don't let her have that. I'll find it in my back one of these days. Yeah, good thinking. The rest of the stuff is good. She can have it if she wants. What's the story on the ransom? Until we find Blue and take care of him, we're not going to do anything about the ransom. You think Carpenter will wait? He doesn't have any choice in the situation. I'm calling the shots, not him. Let him sweat. Yeah, but I don't think she's going to be able to hold out. What do you mean? I think she's going a little wacko, man. I swear I heard her talking to herself when I went by there. Talking to herself? Yeah, but it's not any of our concern, really. I mean, we didn't make any guarantees. We promised Carpenter we'd let her go. We didn't say she had to be sane, right? You really think she's losing it, huh? Yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, maybe I ought to have a little talk with her. Ron, right, come on, man. She's been out there two months. I what said I want to see her. All right? All right, we make it snappy. I got to get out to Kingsley. I got a couple of ideas where Blue might be hanging out. Yeah, well, if you uh, find him before Weaver does, make sure you finish the job. Yeah, don't worry. I will. I hate to think what would happen if that bird brain got caught by the police. All right, fine. I want to see uh, Miriam now, so go get her, huh? Don't forget the blindfold her. Still can't get over it. Everything's happened so fast. You've gone through a lot these past few days. Well, I still can't put all the pieces together. Seems more like a nightmare. A terrible nightmare than something that really happened. You've held up so well, Lori. We're so proud of you. It's like when you wake up in the middle of a dream and, and somebody's shaking you and, and talking to you and you don't know what's real. The person that's waking you up or the dream. Mom, you and Peter and Ben have been so good to me. Well, sweetheart, we love you. You know, just about everything about that night's come back to me now. It's no wonder that I blocked it out of my mind. But even now, when I think about it, I... Well, all the pieces still don't fit. Yeah. I know, honey. I know. If only I'd listened to Ben. He begged me to quit that teaching job. He didn't want me working down there. Well, I really didn't much like the idea either. And I know he wanted what was best for me, for us. Boy, if I'd only listened to him. But no, I had to be stubborn and do things my own way. Yeah, but don't forget, Lori, you were trying to do something good for those kids down there. Your heart was in the right place. Oh, yeah. High ideals. It didn't get me very far, did it? I wouldn't be so sure. Do you remember Lila? She came to see me a couple times after you went into the hospital. She did? Mm -hmm. She told me that you had really changed her life. She has gone back to Kingsley High. She wanted to become a nurse. That's right. That's what we talked about, and I told her about the nursing school. I hope that Someday she'll be one of my students. So you see, your teaching did make a difference. But it was wrong. It was all wrong. I should have listened to Ben. He's my husband. Lori, have you talked to Ben about this? Yeah, a little bit last night. You know, this can be a new beginning for the two of you. As horrible as this experience has been, it can bring the two of you closer together. I doubt that. Honey, sometimes trials help us to realize a, a deeper truth, a deeper love. Mom, don't you see? This hasn't brought us closer together. It's driven us apart. Lori. 
In some ways, yeah. Yeah, in some ways, we are closer. But, Mom, I haven't been a wife to him at all. I love Ben a lot, but I just, I can't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Look, honey, whatever the problem is, I know that you and Ben can work it out together. And when you do, your marriage is going to be stronger than it has ever been. Okay, Peter, what's up? Well, look, it's, it's really nothing. I mean, it's just something I couldn't talk to anybody about, so I thought I'd wait and talk to you. Oh, well, thanks. No, I, you know what I mean. It's, it's uh, about Vicky. Uh, you know, I had a feeling the last time we talked that uh, you weren't through with her yet. You were right. Okay, so what is it? Well, you know I like her, right? Come on, Peter, what happened? Okay, we had this date. It was no big deal, just a dinner date, right? Mm -hmm. Was it at her place? No. Uh, that was later. I see, that was the whole thing. I thought we had an understanding, and then she starts coming on to me real heavy, right? I didn't know what to do. I didn't... Well, it's different for a guy, you know. Different? Yeah. See, I tried to explain to her that we shouldn't go to bed together. Do you know how dumb that sounds? <laughs> huh? Well, no, I don't think it sounds that dumb. But I was ready, Ben. I was ready. I've been ready. I've been ready for years. But it's just this Christian hang-up. Oh, is that what she called it? No, that's what I call it, because that's what it is. Oh, Peter, come on. I, you know, I think you're reading too much pop psychology. I mean, what you're talking about is not a hang-up. It's just a simple matter of conscience. It's the old morality, huh? Yeah, well, some people call it that today, but hey. As far as I'm concerned, it's the only morality. It's God's morality. And it's all laid out there in print for anybody that wants to read it. Ben, Ben, I know all that stuff. But when I was alone in that apartment with Vicky, Sunday school was the farthest thing from my mind. Well, yeah, I'm sure it was. But you have to think about the consequences. I mean, think what it would have done to you and to her. It upset me, and it upset her. Yeah, for the moment, maybe. But let me tell you something, Peter. There's no such thing as a purely physical relationship. That's a myth. That's why the Lord sanctified marriage. Oh, mm. Hey, now listen. When two people sleep together, they become involved more than just physically. They become involved emotionally and spiritually as well. Try telling that to a beautiful blonde who has just asked you to go to bed with her, huh? Come on. Uh, but you did get up and leave. Yes, because of my upbringing. Hey, it's just a matter of sticking to what you believe in spite of what other people may say or think. I suppose. Hey, come here. Sit down. Let me tell you something. If you would have listened to me the last time, you wouldn't be having this mess. Date church girls? Come on. Sure, you might find one who thinks the same way you do. I don't even like to go to church. But you go. There's not one girl at that church that's like Vicky. I rest my case. I wonder, I wonder what she's thinking. I tried to explain this thing to her, but she, she just didn't understand, I know. She thinks I'm scared. Or worse. How am I going to face her? Well, I don't see that there's any reason that you have to face her again. That's the problem. I want to see her again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that stupid or what, huh? Yeah. yeah. Please, Miss Mason, sit down. Oh, it's you. Right here. Ouch. And don't be afraid because no one's going to hurt you. Well, when are you going to let me out of that place? All in due time. I just came by here to see for myself how you're getting along. I certainly don't want you be, to be subjected to any mistreatment while you're here. A mistreatment? What on earth do you call being locked up in that place for weeks? I'm sorry if our accommodations aren't more to your liking. Oh, you are, aren't you? I'm sure you are. We have no idea what it's like to be out there all alone. With, once in a while, be able to talk to Blue, and that's all. But what's happened to Blue, anyway? Blue is a very disturbed young man, and he won't be with our organization any longer. Why? What do you mean? Shut up. Well, what? 
Yeah, well, how much longer am I going to have to be kept here? Didn't you talk to my father about the ransom and everything? It seems that the negotiations are going to take a little longer than we expected. Oh, why? Why? Well, look, Miss Mason, I realize it's difficult for you, all this confinement. But if you hold out just a little longer, I'm sure that you'll be reunited with your family very soon. Very soon? Soon? What does that mean to you? Does that mean days or weeks or years or I'm sorry, Miss Mason, but I can't set a specific time. Oh, I've got to know. I'm sorry. <sighs> now, here. Lance told me you... Watch it. Lance said that you requested that. Oh, yes. Yes, it's in my purse. I need to have some things in here because I want to get... I want to get a pen so that I can write to my son. I need to get in touch with Eric. I'm sorry, but any communication that you have with your son will have to wait until after your release, and you won't find a pen in there. Well, how about... Uh, could you just ask my father what that letter said, and could you just find out and tell me, maybe? It's possible. Please. All right, I'll consider it. Thank you. Thank you. That would mean a great deal to me. All right, just one more matter, Miss Mason. My uh, associate here, he hasn't tried anything with you, has he? Tried anything? Uh, no, no. There hasn't been any problem. He has been a perfect Perfect gentleman. I like that. You know that? I like that a lot. You're a very smart chick. You're one of the few girls I know who knows when to keep her mouth shut. You're also beautiful and you got smarts. And that's a good combination, Miriam. A combination like that might keep you alive just a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, did I say a little bit longer? Oh, I'm so sorry. My sincerest apology. <laughs> no, you said a perfect gentleman. You remember? Huh? 